Hello, I'm Herrick Kimball. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I want you to know that this is an eclectic, mostly how-to channel. And today, with that in mind, I am going to tell you all about these muddy boot slippers that I made a couple days ago. These are made out of carpet underlayment, but you could make them out of other materials, and I'll discuss that. Now, muddy boot slippers are made to slip your muddy boots into when you come from outside, you slip them on. If you're only going to be inside for a few moments, like for example, to get a glass of water at the kitchen sink, well, you slip the muddy boot slippers on and you shuffle across the floor, you get your glass of water and you get yourself back outside without having to remove uh, your footwear. In this instance, my boots. It's a hassle to unlace them just for some quick thing in the house. So these muddy boot slippers are something I've thought about for quite a while. Finally got around to making them. This is not an original idea. Uh, you can purchase what I'm calling muddy boot slippers on Amazon. You can get these for around 40 bucks. That's an option, of course, or you can make them, and I am going to show you how I made these. And we'll talk about materials and procedure. I am also going to give you a pattern, free, a free pattern at the very end of the video that will allow you to cut the top piece and the bottom piece to make this size and style of muddy boot slipper. Alrighty then, let's talk about the materials. First off, the primary material that I used here is a uh, felt underlayment, carpet underlayment. I bought this on Amazon. I bought a three foot by five foot piece. It is three eighths of an inch of felt with a rubber backing, okay? This is available as quarter inch also with a rubber backing. That probably would have worked just as well and been easier to work with. Now, I bought this on Amazon three foot by five foot, more than enough. I didn't know, you know, if how much I was gonna waste in the process of trying to figure out um, what I was doing here. But uh, you could probably just go to a carpet supply place near you and get pieces of this for uh, nothing or next to nothing, cheaper than what I paid for sure. The other option, if you are a resourceful person, would be to go to a thrift store and look for a heavy winter coat that's like wool, and you could use that, and you could even double it up, you know, with some spray adhesive to get a, a more thickness. Uh, that would be an option. And the other material here that I used is, or I haven't used it yet, but I'm, I'm probably going to, is leather. And here again, you could go to a thrift store, and you could get uh, a, some garment that is cheap and made of leather or even pleather, okay, fake leather. Now, the thing is that this rubber material on here is not made to take a lot of wear. It's made to just sit on your floor with the carpet over it, right? So I've already noticed what little I've shuffled across the kitchen floor with these that there's wear on them. So I just happen to have scrap leather around and I've cut it to fit that, and I'm at some point going to use the spray adhesive, contact adhesive here, to adhere this on. I would have done it already, but the end of this is clogged up. This is an old can. Hopefully I can unclog it, but that's beside the point, isn't it? Yeah, be resourceful or uh, get yourself a piece of this on, uh, on Amazon. It's more convenient. The other material is thread. I sewed I sewed around this to connect the top and the bottom. And I used this thread here. This is actually for leather work. And it, uh, it's a yard sale. Yard sale, I picked this up, lifetime supply. You need some sort of heavy duty thread, okay? Now, for tools to make these, you're going to need scissors, some sort of scissors. And I'm gonna show you how this cuts with scissors. I tried tin snips thinking that they would do a good job and they did not, they just didn't do it. And I tried a very sharp utility knife. That did work. It didn't work as well as scissors. These are just regular 
scissors. I think these are paper scissors. And the trick to these is to just cut a little at a time. Okay. And if you don't have high expectations for your scissors to sail right through, you then you won't be disappointed. You got to take just a little at a time. This is where I think that quarter inch material will uh, cut better than this 3 8 inch thick. But you can see I'm taking quarter inch at a time, each cut, working my way along. It's hard. There's no easy way with this material, I don't think. But, uh, but that is the easiest way. Some scissors. These are, I've used these quite a bit. They're not, they're not dull, but they're not sharp. The other tool that you're going to need is a heavy duty needle, uh, like a upholstery needle, maybe they call them. I'm not, as you will find out, a, uh, a experienced person when it comes to sewing, but I said to my wife, I need a big needle. And she was at Walmart and she got me these uh, seven heavy fabric repair needles. And they're for canvas carpet, leather, uh, sacks, sailcloths, and upholstery. An upholstery needle, that makes sense, right? So you need a heavy duty needle if you're gonna have heavy duty thread. That's that. Now, let me tell you that I cut two pieces. Right here is one piece. And what I did was I set my boot on a piece of cardboard right here and I outlined it. And uh, that's the other one. Uh, I outlined it. Put it on the cardboard, I outlined it. Then I traced a one inch, one inch more. I made it one inch bigger all the way around. These are, these boots here are size 10. Carolina's, my favorite boot. You, they're uh, comfortable the moment you put them on, brand new. And I've worn Carolina's for years and that is beside the point also. That's how I came up with this particular size right here, okay? And I believe this size will work for most any kind of footwear. And if perchance it's too big, you can certainly sew in a little further to make it smaller. The bottom is pretty straightforward, just like that. And I have a pattern at the end of this video. You take a screenshot of it and you can then draw yourself a one inch grid and you can figure from there using that uh, picture that I gave you, all right, to make that right there. Now the top, that was a bit of a challenge. And I finally came up with the uh, size, the shape that I needed to get that right there, okay? And this is it, it's kind of an odd looking shape. And again, I have a pattern at the end of this video and the pattern is half of that, like that. So you would draw half of it and then uh, uh, draw two halves basically and end up with that. All right, let's now talk about putting these together, these two pieces. I suggest that you make a mark in the center of the toe right there on this pattern. And the center here is pretty easy to figure, but mark those on your pieces, okay? I've got that marked right there. And then line them up, okay? This worked for me quite well and then use a clamp. In this instance, I have a classic American clothespin. You could use a spring clamp. Then flip your pieces over and get this centered. You know, you don't want it over here. You don't want it over here. You want to get it centered by eye will, will work quite well, right about there. And then get this over there like that and put another clamp on the end. This is what worked for me. Uh, I've only made one or two pairs of these, or one pair, two, two slippers, slip-ons. And uh, this is what worked for me. So we'll get that clamped, okay? And then I'm gonna put another clamp midway, okay? Maybe I need to adjust that. You got the idea. All right, and so there we go. Now we need to sew these together. I am certainly not going to instruct you on how to sew these because I'm not that good at it. I used a blanket stitch, or you could call it a modified blanket stitch. 
it's modified because I didn't do it exactly right. I kind of modified it by doing it wrong in some places. But the point is, it's together. It will hold. It's not like it's going to get a lot of stress. It's sufficient. So I recommend the blanket stitch. There's lots of videos on YouTube, but I've got a video link that you could go and check out uh, it, to, to learn. That's what I recommend. I got a feeling there's people watching this, some of you who are uh, really good at this. But even if you're not really good, the point is you can put these together like that right there. So yeah, that's it. That's it. Muddy boot slippers right there. It'll work for you. Now the only other thing I could add here by suggestion is in the back. You can see I've got an inch, which is a, what I, you know, when I traced it. But in the back here, it, it wouldn't hurt to be just a little bit longer so that when you put these on, if needed, you could have something to step on with your other foot. You know, you could step on here and drive your, drive your boot in a little deeper, okay? It's really not ne necessary, but uh, it occurred to me that might be a nice feature. The pattern I give you at the end of this video does not have uh, any more length to it. You would, if you wanted to do that, you would have to add, you know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch more. So yeah, there you go, folks. That's it. Muddy boot slippers, muddy boot slip-ons right there. Very practical, very useful. Keep your floors clean with muddy boot slippers. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.